Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Raw Review, where apparently Kevin Hawk is way more hyped than I am. Don't use that word. Way more excited than I am. Because I'm excited it's over. <laughs> I mean... It was raw. It had ups and downs. It had like three ups, and the rest of them were... In his opinion. Well, okay. Okay. I don't know. I'm conflicted. Well, wasn't the first thing the Hardy Boys versus the club? <laughs> Unless we want to talk about Roman Reigns opening the show. Oh yeah, Roman Reigns did a promo. Uh, he talked about... Samoa Joe talking shit back to him was the best part. Yeah, he, cu he cut a promo and he said, I'm going to fight whoever the champion is at SummerSlam. Because look at all the people that I beat. Yeah. This is my yard, I make rules. And then Joe came out and said, bitch, you forgot my name. I am... So Son of a show. And I will fuck your world up. And then he headbutted him in the face. Yeah. And then Kurt Angle made it a match. And that was one of the really good things that happened. <laughs> was the match. I didn't really care about the match. I actually kind of nodded off a couple times while the match was oh, I noticed. The yeah. match itself was actually really good. Like, what I saw of it was good. But I just, I, I lost interest real quick. But the end... I, I was really worried that in WWE's typical 50-50 booking style, since Joe won, won the, the first, first time they yeah. fought each other in Joe's J debut match on Monday Night Raw, yeah. that Roman Reigns was going to take this one. And there was and a good chance. Super shitty timing to yeah, have Samoa Joe lose. They're trying to build him up for a title match. Like, yeah. oh, why did he lose to Roman Reigns? But he didn't. No. Because Roman Reigns was distracted by the sound of an ambulance backing up into the loading dock. Was that what it was? And then the doors opened, and six months early, <laughs> the abominable Strowman has returned to Monday Night Raw. Yeah. I don't know exactly how early, but boy, oh boy, man, they said, they said more than like 30 days. I think maybe we've been like 35 days, 40 days. Yeah, no, it, it's... He hasn't been gone that long. No. And this is excitement. The crowd popped. It was probably the biggest pop of the night, to be completely honest. Yes. Uh, and then Roman Reigns went to sleep. Yeah. Because Joe locked him in the coquina clutch. He passed out. Joe left. And then Braun, Braun Strowman fucked Roman World's world. Roman Reigns world up. Yeah, Braun Strowman did what Braun Strowman does best and waits until Roman Reigns is unconscious laying down and then yells, I'm not finished with you yet. Mm -hmm. And then continues to beat him up some more. He does a little front choke slam thing and then he said if, he, if he's man enough, he'll face him at Great Balls of Fire in an ambulance match. So now we have at least guaranteed one probably semi-entertaining match on Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. <laughs> because as much as I like Samoa Joe, and as much as I know it's going to be a little bit to your chagrin that I say this, that's, I, that's I, all right. I, I, I occasionally enjoy watching Lesnar just hurl people around the ring because... It just amuses me how freakishly strong some people can be. That's, and that's okay, I guess. You know, like, I thought it was amazing when he was, like, in that match with Seth Rollins, because Seth Rollins just looked like a life-size Jumbie doll. Yes. <laughs> um, but with as much prospect that match has of looking like a legitimately real fight, I'm still not going to put, like, any of my money on that being... Match of the night. Match of the night, or even, like, a semblance of an actual wrestling match. Mostly because Brock Lesnar doesn't know how to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Then our, our and first... the match was accepted. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Because Roman, Roman don't bitch out. Yeah. He does make this face when Braun shows up, though. He looked legit like like he was about to piss his pants. Well, I love the idea that, like, 
Booker T said like he looked like he saw a ghost. And that's kind of like what I thought initially, is it looked like, you know, it was. It was Roman Reigns looking at something he thought he wouldn't see again. Yeah. At least for another six months. But yes, our first match of the night was the Hardys defeating the club. Go figure. I'm, I'm going to give this match a little credit, because the club did hit the Boot of Doom. Yes. It was Boot of Doom time. <laughs> Yeah, on it, Matt Hardy. Yeah, they hit the boot of doom on Matt. And... Which got them closer to a win than I ever thought they would have gotten in this match. That's true. But, Je- then, but Jeff is there to break it up. Yeah, and then they did this twist of fate swanton bomb, and the new version of the swanton bomb, where Jeff Hardy doesn't jump as far as he used to. He just lands on people. And he just essentially was them with a front flip attached. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the Hardy boys we actually saw later... Because they were watching a tag team match between Sheamus and Cesaro, taking on the Titus brand. Which oh is... my god. The fact that it's a team name now. And they, like, here's, here's like, I, I don't want to, like, come across like I'm defending Titus O'Neil right now. Or Apollo Crews, for that matter. But, like, it, like... It blows my mind that WWE boxes certain people into the same role over and over again. Like, no matter how hard they try and make somebody unique, it's like, hey, we're trying to make Titus O'Neil a unique character that people can get behind or people can dislike. Okay, what are we going to do? Let's put him in a tag team where the other guy is better than him. Okay, but we're going to get... It's going to be like a white guy, right? Nope, we already did that. Back to black. Oh. Darren Young again? Nope, Balder. <laughs> oh. Alright. It's just like a slightly smaller, more talented Titus O'Neil. That and, doesn't mark. And and here's, here's the weirdest thing. I was so confused by the whole Titus brand thing. Because first off... Okay, so... They're going against the tag team champions. They're not going to fucking win this match. No. There's no fucking way that Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews are going to beat Sheamus and Cesaro. And uh-huh. they didn't. No. They got... I don't remember who it was. Someone got hit with Apollo. the... Apollo. He got hit with the assisted white noise, and they fucking lose. I'm going to call it lowering the bar. Okay. Cool. So, okay. Now, were they heels going against... Big... What is the, is the Titus brand a heel or a face? Because Titus is pushy. Because we saw him earlier when we had a one-on-one match between Akira Tozawa and TJP. Yeah. And he hyped up how cool Akira Tozawa is. Yeah. Here, here's the breakdown of the Titus brand. I'll give it to you. Please. Right now. Please explain it because I am fucking confused. WWE thought it would be funny... For Titus to start this. Alright. Spawning off of the angle where he couldn't get into the New Day. Because that's what spawned oh, the Titus brand. Oh, he couldn't get into the New Day, so he wanted to start his own thing. Yeah, and so he starts the Titus brand. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So, heal. And essentially, almost force recruits people. Baby faces. Yeah, he force recruits baby faces. So we can make a new day. Potentially. That'd be weird. How if, weird. If Tozawa, Apollo, and Titus <laughs> came skipping down to the ring in matching outfits. Yeah, same, a, same thought. With unicorns and ice uh, cream cones. Jesus no, Christ. The, the whole thing is what, I, what I'm assuming is they were really hoping it would get over as a negative thing. And the crowd reaction was... We don't give a shit. Yeah, no. Titus, in the tag team match, got a hot tag, and the crowd made no sound. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like they wanted to make Titus a big heel revolving around the Titus brand. <laughs> you know, the whole, like, him beating Kalisto by holding the tights and yada yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> Being so pushy, and it was going nowhere with the fans. The fans didn't give a shit. 
Yeah. So they're like, oh, maybe the fans will give a crap if we start trying to make them act like baby faces. And it still didn't happen. No. Uh, they literally had less crowd support than Mojo Raleigh. That's because Mojo Raleigh has Zack Ryder. It's the one thing I will give Mojo Raleigh, to be completely honest. This crowd's cheer. He, at least Mojo Raleigh, despite the fact that he hasn't been in WWE nearly as long as Titus O'Neil. No, not at all. Probably hasn't been in wrestling as long as Titus O'Neil. No, he was in football before that. Well, so was Titus, but... You know, Titus has been around the block, but for some reason, he can't figure out how to get the crowd to care about him in any sense of the fashion to the extent that Mojo Raleigh can. Yeah. Whether it's a positive or a negative response... Mojo Raleigh gets a response. Yeah. Titus O'Neil got zero response when he got tagged into this match. And he got very little response after Tazawa beat TJP and Neville was on commentary and started talking trash to Titus. Yeah. And so Titus started talking for Tozawa back at Neville, and I mean he got a little bit of a, a little bit of a pop just because he's talking about Tozawa and not himself. Yeah, and uh, now it's to this point where WWE wants to push Titus O'Neil because Titus O'Neil's an outstanding citizen and a great dad and does this and that and all this other he's, good stuff. He's a great person. He's a good human being. But it's literally getting to the point where they have to attach him to other popular wrestlers in order for people to even realize he exists. That's not a good sign. There's my right on Titus O'Neil. Moving That's on. That's nothing to do with his horse face or his lack of talent in the ring. That's legitimate. People don't realize Titus O'Neil exists unless you attach him to somebody else. Can we move on then? Sad man. Goldust is going to return to the ring next week. Fuck yeah. He says it's going to, he's going to put on his latest uh, motion picture, and that is The Shattered Truth. Uh, still loving the Goldust promos. Uh, I, I liked I liked R-Truth's response to it this week also. He's going to slap um, him. Yeah, he's going to slap him. He uh, quoted Batman, which was cool. And uh, so, yeah, we are potentially getting Goldust versus R-Truth on Monday Night Raw next week. Or we're getting the first actual in-ring segment to build towards a match at Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. I'm thinking that one, more likely. So that's the thing. Uh, Elias Samson tried to play a song, <laughs> then tuned his guitar, and then got cut off by Finn Balor. Who scary looked him out of the ring. Yeah. And then beat Bo Dallas. Despite the fact that like Finn looks like a guy in a boy band, yeah, no, I, like, looking at them, I would expect Elias Sampson to kick way more ass than Finn Balor. Yeah, then Finn just looks at Elias, and Elias is like, all right, just put his guitar on his shoulder and walked away. Um, but yeah, Finn Balor had a match against Bo Dallas and beat him with the coup de grace. Bo had a lot of offense in this match, though. Bo was very physical in this match, and it was kind of nice to see. It's nice to it's see him doing some stuff. The same credit that I'm gonna really give that I gave Randy Orton for <coughs> the Money in the Bank pay per view yeah. is that despite being the way more popular talent, definitely uses that to give the rub to the yes. less popular guy and make him look like a million bucks. It also benefited Bo Dallas and what happened later on. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, after defeating Bo Dallas, Finn Balor was doing a backstage interview and, that, and was actually attacked by Elias Sampson. And the uh, announcer screamed and it made like this yeah. weird metallic warble noise. Yeah, Charlie sounded like a transformer for a second. <laughs> it was weird. That's uh, why we didn't see her for a while. She had to get back to like normal form. <laughs> yeah. No, she, she turns into the microphone. When, when she panics, she turns into one of the set pieces. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're starting a thing between... Finn Balor and Elias Samson. 
Because... Because Debi- Raw doesn't know what to do with a former I Never Lost the Belt Universal Champion. Well, they have Samoa Joe in line, and then they have Roman Reigns in line, and they also have Braun Strowman in line. So... Okay. And WWE, or Vince thinks he's too tired. Speaking of that whole Extreme Rules title picture, we got more build in what's going to be Seth Rollins versus Bray Wyatt. Because Seth Rollins announced, uh, we got to see the, the trailer for WWE 2K18, uh, which Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins is on the cover of, which is cool. Nice to see someone who actually deserves to be on the cover. Um, and, yeah, Bray said some stuff. I, the one bit I liked in this whole thing was, like, you know, uh, Seth kind of put it into perspective. He's like, you know, it, you know, in your world, you consider yourself a god. And that's fine. But in my world, you're, you're nothing more than a coward. And so it was like... You know, it was that that putting in perspective how people are viewing themselves, yeah. and so Bray's like, "Oh, okay. Well, you don't believe you don't believe what I'm capable of. Well, guess what? I'm here." And he comes down to ringside. And yeah, Bray didn't take kindly to. No, no, he uh, was Seth Rollins just put down. No, and so he decides to come to the ring, and Seth's standing in the ring the whole time, and and he goes to blow out the uh, the lantern. Lights come back on, and Seth Rollins is airborne and crossbody. Uh, down onto Bray Wyatt, which apparently, uh, we were going through YouTube, we had to check something uh, that we didn't see on Raw. Um, we saw Seth had, like, sti- uh, Seth got stitches inside of his face. Yeah. Apparently, when he crossbodied, because Bray had uh, blood in his mouth, I think he might have, like, sliced himself open on Bray Wyatt's teeth. Oh. Huh. Like... Face to mouth connection, blood everywhere. Gross. Stitches in Seth Rollins' face. So that's a thing. Sounds unsanitary. A little bit. I wouldn't want an open wound that near Bray Wyatt's beard. Oh, not Bray Wyatt's beard looks like something that could carry disease. Bray Wyatt does look like a person who has a couple diseases. He's kind of a dirty looking man. Diabetes. That makes. Um The one thing we didn't actually see on Raw because our feed just cut the whole damn thing out was Nia Jax versus Sasha Banks, uh, which didn't last long. Devolved into all the women on Raw just beating the shit out of each other. Sans Alicia Fox, who I guess is still FaceTiming with Noam Darcy. Nah, she she's she's not a woman on Raw anymore. She's a woman on Two Hundred Five Live. She's the only woman on Two Hundred Five Live. It's a subsidiary of Ross. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, she, she's dealing with a neck injury that she got at Extreme Rules. So, um, yeah, she probably got that neck injury when Sasha dove on her. More than likely. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, it was. We had uh, Emma chased Alexa Bliss to the ring. Yes, and Alexa tried to hide behind Nia Jax. And then Nia was like, "We don't play this game anymore." I literally just grabbed Alexa and was like, here you go, Emma. <laughs> yeah. And then Emma went to kick Alexa, but Alexa moved, so Emma accidentally kicked Nia Jax. Therefore, the match was over. Yeah. Technically, Nia, Jax, Nia was... Jax wins by disqualification. <laughs> then, Sasha kind of gets involved, and we have all four of them going. And then we had Dana and Mickey run down, because they were involved last week. And so then it's like, them... Versus everybody else, except for Sasha. They're kind of they're cool with Sasha. And Sasha kind of disappeared at this point. Yeah, Sa- Sasha didn't get a whole lot involved, and then she kind of came back at the end. But then Bailey comes down <laughs> and cleans house. Yeah. And then we had all the baby faces watching as the heels walked away. Craziness in the women's division. So great balls of fire. The second ever WWE Women's Money in the Bank match between seven, seven women. Seven women. From Monday Night Raw. None of whom have male counterparts to ruin the match with. Hey, there we go. Hey. Um. All right, so. We have two more things we got to talk about. One of which was cool, one of them was a letdown. What do we want to talk about first? I mean, for me, one of them was cool, one of them was a letdown. 
I guess the letdown was more so the overarching storyline. Let, let's save the ending for the end. Okay. Uh, okay, so after Bo Dallas lost to Finn Balor, he was in, he was in the locker room. Uh, Curtis Axel was, like, trying to get him back, like, hey, man, I've, I've seen what you're capable of. I believe. Yeah, I believe in you. You know, you're, 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 you're good at all these things that you do, blah, 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 blah. Bo doesn't give a fuck. And then Miz walks in and says, hey, you know, it's kind of sad to see you guys, you know, just, you know, moseying around back here. Bo, you're losing matches. Curtis, you're not even on the show. You know, you guys were... You guys actually had potential when we were when we were on the movie set of Marine Five, and now you know you you could have you could have launched yourself with that movie, and now you're just kind of here. So I'm going to give you an option to join my entourage to actually make names for yourself. So then we have Ms. TV because Ms. has been in the doghouse for a couple of weeks, yeah, uh, and is trying to apologize to Maurice. There are two dancing bears with signs, there's champagne, there's a giant box, very similar to the Miz Intercontinental Celebration the night after Extreme Rules. Yeah. Uh, the start of this whole doghouse business. Exactly. So, Miz brings Maurice out, says, hey, I got your favorite champagne. Maurice, you will be on table for three immediately following Monday Night Raw, only with, on the WWE Network. With Eve Torres and, Ke and Kelly Kelly. Um... So, you know, he's, hey, I've got your favorite champagne. Look, I brought dancing bears. I even have this huge present for you. Please go ahead and open it. And she does. She tears into it, and it's the grandfather clock that she gifted him. He has been spending weeks where he's had to sleep on the couch. He's been spending in the garage watching YouTube tutorials on how to fix grandfather clocks. Which he said that he fixed with glue <laughs> and tape and tape. You're watching some bad YouTube tutorials, Which, Miz. I mean, I don't know that much about fixing grandfather clocks. <laughs> I, think, but I think it's safe to say you don't use glue or tape. Glue, maybe, on some superficial parts. Like wood glue. But on the other hand, like, if you fix it with glue and tape, you shouldn't have brought it into the ring on Monday Night Raw, because if you try to move it, it's going to fall apart again. Uh, luckily, they didn't try to move it. They didn't try, but they unintentionally They did. Uh, because Miz goes on this long speech, just just pours his heart out to Maurice. Yeah. And, and she finally starts, like, her, her little icy heart starts to melt a little. Yeah, I, you know, I, I felt like the Miz was being very truthful and honest yeah. with all these things. He's, he loves this woman. That's why they're married. And so, you know, she finally forgives him. They, they're, they're about to... Have that like, you know, reconciling kiss, and then Dean Ambrose decides to come <laughs> out, and Dean gets in the ring, <laughs> stares him down for a second, and then takes one step towards Miz, and Miz shoves Maurice in front of him. At which point, Maurice, with a glass of champagne, is she fucking spills it all over her face. She is so pissed off. She is done with the situation and Dean is Dean's laughing and starts to go after the Miz I think that uh, no Dean was laughing the Miz went after Dean yeah. Dean sidestepped and, and he, Miz tripped and fell into the grandfather clock again and so Maurice which, which fell apart yes because it was put together with glue and tape yeah uh, so Maurice Covered in champagne, the grandfather clock destroyed once again. Maurice leaves after spending a second in the ring, like like not doing, doing what doing to do. Circles, uh, like which way do I go? <laughs> and then Miz, it, Miz, I don't know if he was like trying to go after her or whatnot, but Dean is just left. You know, he's standing in the ring, watching Miz scurry away <laughs> until the bears attack. We have a, we had a revenant moment on uh, on Monday Night Raw, as Dean Ambrose was mauled by two bears, which ended up being Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. So I am excited to see Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas 
regularly on Monday Night Raw, even if it even if it means they have to be cronies to the Miz. Yeah, this is maybe the beginning of a rectification that is a Vince McMahon thing. <laughs> is after the Attitude Era, Vince doesn't like stables. Yes. Um, Which is unfortunate because I love stables. The good thing about stables, even if they are just three people or four people, is they allow you to put more people into a segment than you would normally get if it was just a one-on-one -on -one feud between Dean Ambrose and The Miz. Yeah. Uh, so it's an actual chance that we would get to see Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, who otherwise wouldn't get the light of day. Yeah. And on top of that, if it goes well, and Axel and Dallas actually, like, create names for themselves, they could either be potential single stars or another tag team for Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Because they've been a tag team before. Social Outcast. So, right we, again. We could totally do it. I've been saying that since, since they both got drafted to Raw, that they should just reform as two members of the Social Outcast. Hell, you know what? We don't have Adam Rose anymore, but Heath Slater and Rhino are on Raw. Yeah, and Rhino's just like a shorter, wider Adam Rose. Let's apparently. reform Social Outcasts and just replace Adam Rose with Rhino. Yeah, and the, yeah, cheese whiz. Yeah, he's just as weird, but ten times more badass. But not as good a dancer. You don't know that. You ever seen Rhino dance? No, but I think there's a good reason we haven't seen Rhino dance. Well, that's Have fair. you seen those legs? <laughs> man, you walks, mean those tree trunks? Man walks the ring like he's been riding a horse for eight years. <laughs> well, there's only one way to get around when you have tree trunk legs. Um, so yeah, that's a cool thing. Now we have the other thing. This was, in my opinion, definitely the lowest point. I'm on it wrong. And it, yeah, it was, it was the biggest letdown because after four weeks of build, we already knew what was happening. So it started when Corey got called back to Kurt Angle's office. Corey is still on this like, I need to help Kurt. Kurt is being harassed by somebody. I'm going to help. I'm putting Kurt over. Kurt is great. While he's back there talking to Kurt, Enzo and Cash show up. Yeah. And that was extremely rude to Corey. Well, because he's on a list of people that potentially attack him and or Cass. Uh, just because of things that he said. So, Kurt says to Enzo I and guess Cass, in fairness, though, Corey Graves constantly runs down Enzo on he, commentary. He does. He does. So <laughs> okay, Enzo in retrospect, has, I, I forgive Enzo for being such an ass. Enzo, Enzo has a decent gripe. Literally for like three years because it was started on NXT. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it just carried over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. All right, Enzo, you have every right to be a dick. <laughs> so Kurt tells Enzo and Cass that by the end of the night, I will figure out who has been attacking you for the last couple weeks. And they're like, all right, cool. Looking forward to it. See you in the ring. So throughout the night, we, well, actually, two segments. We see Kurt talking to... But this is like, usually it's like right before or right after a commercial. Yeah. We, we see Kurt talking to The Revival, and we see Kurt talking to Big Show. Yep. At which point, at the end of the night, Kurt Angle comes out, and he calls both Enzo and Cass and The Revival, as well as The Big Show, down to the ring. And says, okay, I, I just want to, I've, I've been talking to suspects, I, I want to clear the air with certain people, and he asks Big Show, he says, hey, you know, one, one solid punch to the back of Big Cass's head, put him down, I have to ask, is it you? And Big Show gives Kurt the same response he gave Enzo last week. Yeah. Where he says, I can't believe, you know, uh, you know, it's slightly different. It's, you know, after everything we've been through, you're going to ask me that. I can't believe it. You know, if you're going to if you're gonna try and throw that that type of thing onto me, maybe I shouldn't be on your show. So, Big Show takes off. 
and immediately Cass jumps on Big Show like, yeah, see, knew it was you, fine, you know, we don't need you around here anymore. And Kurt's like, Cass, back up, chill out, because we're not done yet. We still have to talk about the revival. But the revival had very solid alibis because he's been talking to agents, he's talked to referees, he's talked to backstage staff that... And other wrestlers. And other wrestlers that at the times when they had been attacked, that someone had uh, had either been talking to or had seen the Revival in a completely different place of the arena. <laughs> so, the Revival, good to go. Revival started, you know, started taking off. And so this, this right here is where the segment should have started. <laughs> Because we already saw Kurt backstage with Big Show. We already saw Kurt backstage with the Revival talking. Kurt could have come out and said in 30 seconds, I talked to Big Show, it wasn't him. I talked to the Revival, it wasn't them. Yeah. I don't know who it is. Maybe if I ask politely, whoever it is will come out. I don't know. And then Corey could have done what he did now yeah. and stand up and say, Oh, I know. First off, how does Corey know everything all of a sudden? Like, Corey is pivotal to, like, a lot of people's shit on Monday Night Raw all of a sudden. Apparently, Corey Graves... He's also going to be revealed as the ex-anonymous Raw General Manager. What was the, uh, what was the TV thing that happened back in... The oh, answer? the GTV? GTV. Graves TV? Yeah. It was Corey Graves the whole time. Yeah. When he was, like, 12. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, like, our age. Anyway, uh, so he stands up and says, hey, I have security footage uh, from the arena last week. Which I kind of like this because this keeps adding to the Corey Graves trying to save Kurt's ass. Yes. Uh, and so we see, plainly, Big Cass setting the scene of his attack from last week. To which Cass said that when he got... when he talked to the medical staff that he had a lump on the back of his head the size of a baseball. But Corey Graves talked to the WWE medical team and said, we, we didn't even treat Cass. And he's like, okay, well, maybe it was the EMTs at the building. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But then, you know, we see this whole setup, and so then, shocker, we find out that Cass... Was the one that attacked Enzo. Yeah. And it's because Enzo has been holding Cass back. Granted, it was too long. I liked Cass's promo. That's alright. Uh, given the circumstances... And the fact that he was talking... The fact that he was promoing to Enzo also helped. Because Enzo's really good at selling with his facial expressions. Yeah. <laughs> Enzo's very expressive. Uh, which also helps. Uh, but yeah. I mean, like I was saying, that whole first segment involving the revival of the big show was completely unnecessary. That could have gone to adding more time to a different segment on the show. Uh... And all in all, as far as, like, the fact that I feel like this segment, like, this storyline hasn't really been picking up any momentum, there wasn't any reason for this to be the, like, the actual main event segment I think, of the show, I other, think, other than the fact that Kurt said, by the end of the show. I think, th they were, they're just hoping that they were going to get a big reaction of the breakup of Enzo and Cass. Yeah. And that's why I felt like they needed to swerve it because everyone was talking about, oh, it was Cass. You know, it, Cass was the one that attacked, like, from the very beginning. Like, they're, they're what, like they're, their only saving grace was the fact that they had the little hints of the revival yeah. back there. And that was about the only thing that made us think otherwise. I never thought it was Big Show. No. But they really, I feel like they really could have capitalized on putting someone else over as the person who, person or persons who did it. Yeah. 
they definitely, I mean, as cliche as it is, they definitely would have got a better reaction if Cash just out of the blue hit Enzo. Yeah. Yeah, ra rather, rather than explaining himself and then kicking Enzo in the face, if he had just attacked Enzo and then left. Yeah, like, like what if like they had just won a match, like they just beat the club or something, and then Enzo turns around and Cass kicks him right in the face. Way bigger shock value. Yeah. But, I mean... So... It's got its upsides, it's got its downsides. Upside being... Cass is not a bad wrestler, so... We'll see how he does on his own. Uh, uh, here's a downside that we didn't even mention while we were talking during Raw. It's one less tag team on the Raw roster. That's why I'm hoping that the Social Outcasts get back together. Yeah. <laughs> Opens up a spot. So maybe they're just trading out one duo for another. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, I mean, w now we do have a chance to, to push uh, Slater and Rhino. Uh, the Revival are back. Uh, we can find maybe do something cool with the club. I don't know. Nope. We have the Hardys. We have the bar. We have... That's it. We are the bar. No, we're not. We're not Cesaro and James. Speak for yourself. Okay, you can be James. Unzip. <laughs> Two people <laughs> come out of me. That would be weird. We get so many hits on YouTube. Anyway. So Zara and Shamus hit me up so we can put this together. Sure. Uh, yeah. Rob was the thing. It was. Um, we're building towards Great Balls of Fire still. We are building towards that pay-per-view. It's called Giant Flaming Penis. It's called Fire Crouch. Um, Becky Lynch, the pay-per-view. Oh. Anyway. Nope. nope. Shamus, um, the pay-per-view. Uh, well, he'll be there. This is more accurate than I guess. That's fair. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click the links. There's a lot of links. Check out the podcast. That's the link. Check out our Money in the Bank review. That is in the playlist. That is. Indeed. I haven't had to point at the playlist in a while. Yeah. Uh, and or down there if you're on mobile. No, exactly. And check out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. It's Reasonable the W. Light Wrestling. wrestling. Uh, with all types of extra videos like Fantasy Warfare, The Hocktail Hour, and many, many. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Still fun. Time's so new.